Hi, I'm Elaine Harding. It's Christmas Eve day. I have one last fun corner opening box with a belly band um, to show you today. This is the box. The top has got a poinsettia flower on it and it's on a belly band and this is how the box opens. So I'll show you how to make it. You need the poinsettia dies. They can be found in the annual catalogue for 2021 to 2022 on page 165. These are the poinsettia dies. Unfortunately, they're no longer bundled with the poinsettia petals stamp set, but you can find the stamp set on page 92. I die cut my petals from the snowy white 12 by 12 inch 30.5 by 30.5 centimeter velvet sheets there's only two in a pack i cut the largest one and to create the embossed look for the veins you need both of these now i've marked my dies so that i know which way these fit together so even before I take it out of the packet, I do that so it makes life easier for me. And I've done the same with the medium one and the smallest one. As you use them, the markers will wear off, so you have to keep refreshing it. And I also die cut the flower centre here. I also die cut two sprigs in the golden rose gold 6x6 6 15.2x15.2 metallic specialty paper. Granny Apple Green Ink Daffodil Delight Blending Pen Granny Apple Green Marker and a sponge dauber. For the belly band I need an A4 length by one and a quarter inches. In metric, that will be 3.5 centimetres by an A4 length. You also need two one and a three quarter inch circles. This is retired, so if you haven't got the punch anymore, then you can use the layering circle dies. So I think probably that one or that one. This box is easier to make than you think. Now this is the box base which is eight and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter inch square. In metric that would be 21 centimeters by 21 centimeters. In Imperial, you score this at two and three quarter inches and five and a half inches. Rotate it a quarter turn and you score it again at two and three quarters and five and a half. In metric, that will be seven centimeters and 14 centimeters. Rotate it and score it again at seven and 14. You need two pieces for the corner closures and this has been cut at three and seven eighths by seven and three quarters. In metric, I've made a direct conversion, otherwise it won't work. So this will be 9.8 by 19.7 centimeters. So it's really easy. You fold the cardstock in half like so. I'll butt it up into the corner so I'll make sure that it's straight and crease the sides. And then you want to score diagonally like that so that there's a cross on each square. So line it up on the scoreboard so that the points are in the groove. I've marked my scoreboard at six inches with a chalk marker so it's easier to see. And you score down that line. Make sure they are in the groove. And then you score in the other direction. I've used the tidings of Christmas. These are six by six inch pack of uh, designer series paper uh, with this design. 
at 2 and 5 eighths by 2 and 5 eighths in metric that will be 6.5 by 6.5 centimeters and then you put it on your trimmer and you cut them into halves like that and you need four pieces for each square so <clears throat> this is how you need to cut your cardstock so that's the two squares whole and then you want to cut away that triangle so we'll do that and cut from the corner so that you can be sure that it's accurate So let's set that aside. We won't glue anything yet because I want to glue it while it's on the box so you don't make a mistake. The other half of triangle will be glued on the inside. So here's my template. Where the solid lines are, that's where you cut. So you make your first cut down here, rotate your cardstock, cut along there, rotate the cardstock again, cut along here and then the last corner you cut along there, okay? I'm going to cut on either side of the score line, the score groove. You take my cardstock and I'm going to cut on that one. I'm going to take my cardstock and cut on that vertical. i take the cardstock again and cut on this vertical. Now burnish the score lines, then assemble the box. So basically you're going all round like so. Okay, so let's glue that. I'm bringing my scoreboard back because I want to make sure that it's square. Make sure that the top is square and then last one, bend that back, apply adhesive. I've glued this while it was on the box. So basically you want to glue this portion here, the arrow portion, onto the box here. So this will act as your hinge. So basically you put the right angle, offer it up to the box like so. Make sure it's at right angles to the base of the box. And this flap goes on here like so. You apply adhesive to this triangle, not on the bottom, and then shut the box and fold that corner over like so. All right. Now I've only temporarily adhered the designer series paper and now you can put it on permanently. Now you need to glue the opposite corner now you want to make sure that the top meets, okay? So fold that back, apply adhesive on here. On this flap, you can see I wasn't very accurate so I had to take that piece off and do it again. But place it on your on the flat surface make sure that this meets okay I hold it by the rim here because that's more stable you've got double layer of cardstock for the box sides and then push that down okay 
then you can reinforce it afterwards. Put your hand in there, make sure that's stuck down. Right, so now that fits and there are no gaps. On this long side here that protrudes out, you want to cut from that point into the score line here. So fold the top triangle back and you want to apply adhesive on this triangle here. You don't want adhesive on the inside, only on the outside. So apply adhesive on this triangle and then you can pop that triangle over and close the box. After that you can glue your pieces together. I like to glue it while it's on the box so that you don't make a mistake as to where to glue it and also you want to choose designer series paper that hasn't got any direction so that it doesn't matter which way up you put your paper and the last one to do is the side that is flat to the work surface So that's your box completed. Place your box upside down because of the opening here, it's not sturdy enough. Um, so place your box upside down and place it in, in the centre so that there's an equal amount of cardstock either side of the box. Okay, then you bend that up just to get a rough idea of where to put your crease. and bend that and this as well then you can reinforce it afterwards so now you want to um, attach the belly band put a bit of adhesive on here on the top make sure it's glued down properly Put a bit of adhesive on the end here, place that on top and hold it until it bonds. Make sure it will slide on and off easily and then you can glue the other circle on top. Put the belly band back, bring in my floral elements and with this little piece I've used the thin end of the marker to draw around the edges of this flower centre. Um, you want to go very lightly because the snowy velvet absorbs the ink and then it will smudge. Then take the Daffodil Delight blending pen and just pop a dot in the middle like so. Then with the thin end of the marker, follow the line of the groove where it's been embossed. Then take the sponge dauber and lightly sponge the leaves just with a hint. Apply adhesive to the smallest piece, the flower centre and attach it to the smallest flower press it down and make sure it bonds and use the large dimensionals on the back of the small flower and stagger it on top of the medium sized one another 
on the back of the medium sized flower and stagger that and pop it on top of the largest one. Then with a the bone folder curl each petal. Now I'm going to <coughs> pop my belly band upside down but I'll turn it around after I've finished um, attaching the flower. So I want this flower to go in the middle so pop it on another dimensional and stick it on top of the box. Arrange the gold sprigs and then just put a bit of glue on these bits here. Lift that up. And slip the belly band off and just lift the petals up and pinch the flowers down so that you make sure it's glued down to the belly band. Okay, and now that you know it's secure, you can pop this back on. And voila, that's how the box looks when it's finished. So it's a side corner opening and you can put all sorts of things in it. Um, bath bombs, some lip balm, and that would make a nice little gift. Thanks for joining me today and I hope you've enjoyed today's project. I'll be back soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.